Hello, this is Kerry Schutz with MathWorks, and this is part four in my series on modeling bridge circuits using Simscape. In this version, we are going to be deriving S parameters of our same device under test, our T-coil circuit, using linear analysis. So again, uh, we are going to do an analytical derivation of our S parameters uh, using the same circuit. It's going to still be built up using a combination of Simulink and Simscape. So it'll look very similar at the surface, but as we delve underneath, the way we approach using the model is going to be significantly different than we did in the previous video. Okay, so this is the test bench we're going to be using today to derive the S parameters of our T-coil circuit. It is the identical circuit constructed using Simscape components. It's connected to this directional bridges subsystem, which is really just an encapsulation of the same directional bridges we were using before. If we were to drill underneath that subsystem, we would see a subsystem for bridge one on port one and bridge two on port two. Those are identical structures. If we were to look underneath either one of those uh, subsystems, we would see the same uh, bridge circuit, the left divider, the right divider. This is a 50 ohm bridge, so 50 ohms, 50 ohms, 50 ohms. And then the lower uh, right leg of the, or the, uh, of the right divider, is our device under test, that being the T-coil. So that's connected to test port one, port one, and uh, connected between um, that and ground. And port two, likewise, is the same structure on connected to port two. Notice we are measuring our B parameters over S parameters, the outgoing waves across the two dividers. We're taking that uh, voltage measurement and we're multiplying it by two, as we discussed in uh, the previous video, video three on this topic, um, that goes on output one, which shows up as row on this port right here. We're terminating it. Notice we are terminating each of those outgoing measurements. We are not displaying them or doing any sorts of further computation on them. And that's sort of kind of the key behind our technique today. We're not uh, analyzing the signal uh, as a typical Simulink signal, we're going to do more uh, analysis of it using um, a feature called linear analysis from Simulink control design. And that's where the red arrows come in, pointing to these strange looking arrows uh, point on each signal line on these, these four arrows you see here, uh, one, two, three, and four. These are called linear analysis points. And I'll go into them a little bit more when we get into the model, but that's really the whole key to today's approach. Uh, it's important to point out there's going to be no simulation today, no solvers involved, no switching between excitations or switching between different measurements. And all of the measurements for all of the ports are going to be made all at once, uh, not sequentially like it was before. So this should be a much faster approach than uh, we were using previously. So keep in mind, even though uh, this model may look different here at the top level, because I've put everything under one subsystem, it's really identical to what I did before uh, where I had a flat model with these bridges, you know, maybe more uh, like maybe more intuitive one on port one here, one bridge connected to port two here. If you were to look at it from a flat viewpoint, sometimes that helps understand it intuitively a little bit better, but we've gotten rid of all of the excitations that are connected to driving the two ports. We've gotten rid of all the switches. We've gotten rid of these voltage measurements, which we also had to feed into the transfer function estimator. A lot of this extra complexity now, we've just completely sidestep it using our linear analysis approach. And then uh, I'll just mention real quick before we jump into the actual example in Simulink, is that if you were to Google these terms, you'll find a link called mixed signal system design. And there you'll find a bunch of other videos in my playlist, some of which are very much related to the content I'm talking about today. All right, so let's go over into the tools. Okay, so now we're over in Simulink, no more PowerPoint. Uh, we've got our T-coil analysis model, not simulation model. Notice it's carefully named. Here's our T-coil device under test with our two ports going into our directional bridges subsystem where we see the same thing we saw on the, saw on the slides. We see directional bridge on port one, directional bridge on port two. Uh, we drill underneath the directional bridges. You see the same constructs, left divider, right divider, where the lower leg of the right divider is the device under test. Notice again, we're taking the voltage uh, across the two dividers 
that is going to be the measurement of our Bs and our S parameters, uh, the outgoing signals from each respective ports. We're multiplying it by two, as we discussed in uh, video three on this topic of bridges. Uh, we're driving the top across the top and the bottom of the port using a controlled voltage source block driven from a Simulink signal. So this is where we make the bridge between the Simulink domain here, uh, unidirectional signals over into the circuit domain uh, via the um, uh, via the uh, Simulink to PS converter and the controlled voltage source. All right, so we have two of those directional bridges. We've got our two, uh, you could call them our B signals coming out, our response measurements across the bridge coming out over each of our ports. And then of course, we're driving into the ports. Now we're driving into the ports using a Simulink signal, which again convert, gets converted to a voltage via the controlled voltage source block. The, what's really different as far as the setup of this model from the previous models is the inclusion of these four linear analysis points. Uh, there is There are two drive points for this two-port network. There are two measurement points for this two-port network. Uh, we got we drive port one, we drive port two, we measure our response on one, we measure the response on two. And of course, when we do the linear analysis, we want all the combinations. We want to drive one, measure two, that's S21. We want to drive one, measure one, that would be S11. Likewise, on from port two, we drive port two, measure port one, that would be S12. Drive port two, measure port two, would be S22, the reflection. So we get all of that sort of for free, that kind of MIMO analysis when we use linear analysis. So when, when you set up a model for uh, linear analysis, and I should probably quickly point out how we got that, if we right click on any signal in Simulink, we can select linear analysis and say, for instance, if we want it to be an input or a drive point, we can say input perturbation. That's an arrow pointing into the signal with a plus and a circle. And for a measurement point, if we right click, it's going to be a linear analysis point arrow pointing up. We're taking something out of the signal line we're measuring. Um, so kind of makes intuitive sense, something coming out, something going in. Now you can do linear analysis, both uh, interactively and programmatically. And this, for this exercise, I'm gonna use a programmatic approach, but I'll make honorable mention of the, of the interactive approach. You can you go to apps and model linearizer and you'll get the same linear analysis where you to use the method I'm about to show you, which is the programmatic approach. I've got a script here just for that purpose called plotsparameters.m. Uh, I have three uh, analysis parameters. I've used the Simulink model just to, as a kind of a poor man's GUI to set those parameters up. I have a start frequency of analysis, a stop frequency, and how many S parameter frequency points I want to analyze. If I single click on that, I'm going to see my. Uh, my analysis function. I'm going to pick up those frequency analysis values from uh, the Simulink model using the Simulink API get param function. Uh, then I'm going to get the four linear analysis points I showed you, the two drive points, the two measurement points. I'll do an operating point analysis, but in this case, it's they're all it's all all the initial conditions should be zero, so it's pretty simple. It's a passive linear model. Then the real work is performed. The linear analysis work is performed by the linearized function. Uh, really, that's the heavy lifter in this script. That's going to return a set of state space matrices, MIMO uh, state space matrices for the, uh, the two IOs, the two inputs, two outputs, multi-input, multi-output. I'll create a frequency vector based on the start and stop frequencies and number of points. Then I'll prescale that uh, analysis that was performed by linearize just to make it be, well better behave numerically. I'll take scaled sys then and do and compute a frequency response of that. Now I'm going to put all of that inside an RF toolbox data object. Uh, and so that's going to be based on our nominal 50 ohm bridge, 50 ohm analysis over this frequency range. I noticed when I created the frequency response, the empirical version of scaled sys, it was done over the uh, frequency range of interest. Now, most of the work's done. Uh, now I'm just going to write out the results of those S parameters to uh, an S parameter file of a particular format, real imaginary format, frequency unit megahertz of a certain name. I'll just take the name of the model and tack on S parameters dot S. 2p and then i am going to extract the s parameters just in its own data object and then plot those out so we'll get the four 
S parameter plots for our two port network. All right, so let's go ahead and run that. In fact, we can even kind of single step through it so you can kind of see what it looks like. I'll just hit run here and we'll step through it, step, and we'll kind of step along. And let's see here. There we go. Here's the heavy lifting step, which is the linearized step. That probably step takes a little longer than, than the others. Uh, if we look at IOs, we got four IOs as, as we discussed. We got the operating point analysis, pretty simple. Um, we've got our system. We got notice it's a four by four, or in this case, uh, the important one that you can tell the multi input is the uh, the four by two here. We got two inputs. That would be the two here um, for the outputs. We got the two outputs. That's that's the two here. And then you could tell it's actually two by two number of inputs, uh, number of outputs here on the D uh, matrix and state space speak. All right. So we've done the heavy lifting. Now we'll just pr proceed on to create a frequency vector. We'll numerically scale better. We'll create this RF data object. We'll stuff, we'll create the frequency response version of that linear system analysis. Um, we're going to write out the S parameter file. Now I've already got that file, it's asking me, do I want to overwrite it? I'll say yes. Now, next we will get the S parameters. We'll put that in a data um, object here, an S parameter data object. Notice it's based on 50 ohms, two ports. The S parameters are here and the frequencies are here in that field. And then finally we'll plot them. The plot comes out and we see our familiar S parameters. We see S12 and S21 at the top overlaid perfectly. And then we see a very similar set of reflection behavior, but not identical at the two ports. At that point, we're essentially done. Of course, we could take this a step further and a step further and do a uh, plot Smith chart, uh, you know, different variations of the Smith chart, admittance chart, impedance chart, et cetera, using other RF toolbox functionality. Um, not doing that here in this particular video. At that point, you could say we're done. Um, go back here to the model. And if I were to time that, which I didn't, that probably took you know well under a minute to do that analysis. So that's really the major benefit of this approach. It's easy to set up. You can take whatever circuit you have, connect it to the directional bridges. And in this case, it's all set up for two port and you could step and repeat for your own circuit, your own two port circuit. If you had four ports or more ports, then you would have to use uh, more directional bridges and more linear analysis points. So there'd be a little more setup for work for more ports. But again, no switches, no excitations, no concerns over aliasing, no solver setup. Um, all of those complications that we had in the previous video uh, would not be there. So this is a great technique either to use, you know, by itself or in combination with other measurement techniques just to make sure uh, that you're getting measurements that uh, you trust. Okay, that's all I have for today on the topic of S parameter measurements and making them uh, using linear analysis. Um, thank you for tuning in. Until next time.